Hi, I'm Scott. Today I'm going to show you how I integrated this Black & Decker leaf collection bag onto my Ryobi Vac Attack leaf vacuum and mulcher on Dad It Yourself. <laughs> Hey, good morning to another rainy day in the Pacific Northwest. It does not disappoint. Here it is almost June and it still feels like late winter, early spring. So what do I have here? Our old friend, the Ryobi Vac Attack Leaf Vacuum and Mulcher. And this has been a workhorse for me. Uh, one of my most popular videos on YouTube. People love this thing. This is part of their 40 volt line. It comes with the vacuum assembly, the nozzle, and the collection bag. And this is where the problem with this unit lies, this collection bag. Uh, when it starts filling up, it gets heavy. It's very, very hard to dump when it's attached to the unit. And it's very difficult to remove from the unit to empty it. So through that process, that is the downfall of this unit. Otherwise, it is amazing. Uh, I've done a bunch of review videos on that, and they're right over here. If you want to check those out, I'll have, some, have a link down in the description. But uh, when I was talking about this on Reddit a few months ago, one of the readers made a suggestion to me and I tried that out and I have a video on that. Okay, so here's my second solution, the Works Leaf Collection System. And what this does is it has a cover that goes over your leaf collection bin. In my case, this is a 95 gallon green bin, but it also worked with a 55 gallon trash can or a 33 gallon trash can or whatever container you choose that the cinch can go around and what that does is as the leaf vacuum pulls the leaves and mulches them it goes through this hose and goes into the bin hey that eliminates the heavy bag that you have to carry around and the awkwardness of emptying it what it does give you an issue with is now your cordless tool is connected by an eight foot hose so you have to drag the bin around with you as you're um, collecting the leaves and I did a review video on this and I'll have a link to that in the description as well. What is the downfall to this? Again, you're connected by an, out, uh, an eight foot hose, you know, for what would be a cordless tool, which gives you the freedom of not being with a, co a cord. And this universal adapter, uh, which is used with non-works thing, isn't the greatest. It, uh, it doesn't hold on very tight. It pops off occasionally. And in my case, I had to modify my leaf vacuum. I had to actually cut it off because this one has an angle to blow it into the leaf collection bag and if I was to use that angle it would hit the side of this universal. Um, I think I may model up a adapter to use this hose to this side without having to use this universal bag and that brings me to my next option. So what do we have here? Well, this is the leaf collection bag from the Black & Decker BEBL 7000 corded leaf vacuum. And that's its disadvantage. It's corded. But this bag is amazing. It has all of the things that we're looking for in a leaf collection bag regarding ease of use and such. And we'll talk about those details in a second. So what are the advantages of this? Well, nice long hose. That's about 36 inches easily. Plenty long enough to reach from the bag to your leaf vacuum and give you enough flexibility to move the leaf vacuum around. What's the second thing? You carry it like a backpack. Standard backpack straps, adjustable, and puts all that weight on your shoulders, not on your arms. So that's a great advantage. And the third thing I think is the closure on the bag. If you've ever used a dry bag for camping or canoeing, you'll be familiar with this. So each of these lips has a steel or plastic strap in there. I don't know exactly which, but it provides access to the inside of the bag. And then to close the bag, you just fold it. And then you clip these two clips together and it holds it closed. And what that does also is this round device helps shape the bag to keep it open while you're collecting. So unlike the work system that comes with a universal adapter, this bag is specifically made for use with the Black & Decker BEBL 7000 system. I was able to pick this bag up as a replacement part, as a spare, 
Um, they don't sell it directly on, say, HomeDepot.com or Amazon. I actually had to go to e-replacement parts, and I'll have a link down in the description for that. And it was only, I think it was 27 bucks. So significantly cheaper than the overall unit, um, but a great option. But how do I get this to match up to this? Well, with that. And this is an adapter that I modeled in SketchUp and printed on my 3D printer. And what it does is slides over this. And then this vacuum hose clips right onto there with a friction fit. And there's my adapter. Let me show you how I did this. So what I did is I got a digital micrometer. This one's from Husky from Home Depot. I'll have a link to it in the description if you're interested. And I just started measuring all the different parameters, the depths, the diameters, the angles of both this side and then this side on the Ryobi. So I'm working on this model right here and I've actually modeled up the ring portion of it in SketchUp. I am not that good at SketchUp and I'm learning as I go but this is going to help me get my scale to see if my measurements are right. So that's the first part of the adapter for the Black & Decker side of the adapter. So I think I've got the connector for the Black & Decker end completely modeled so that it clips in. I'm going to go ahead and send this to the printer now. Okay, so I finished the model. It took me a little bit longer than I thought, but I think it came out pretty good. Uh, so these facets right here were a little difficult to try to figure out, but I think it's good. And I have since downloaded it, sliced it, and it is down there on the printer. Yep, the printer's on the floor because there's no room on the desk right now. Okay, so here is the finished and printed adapter. And as you can see, have a good fit there. And then a good fit here. Well, when I was testing it before I started filming, I don't know if you can see, but there's a crack right there. So this is, I wouldn't say a weak point, but this is just a prototype and it was printed at uh, three tenths of a millimeter as opposed to one tenth of a millimeter. Um, and it's only 20% infill instead of either 100% or 50% just to give it some strength. But this is more of a fit test. So what I also want to check is, um, I think I want to move this angle in so this goes up. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this angle. I'm going to make adjustments to my model and I'm going to reprint another one. So in a perfect world, you'd think I'd be able to take the measurements and just stick them into SketchUp and draw out the prototype. Well, no, it takes a lot of different things. As you can see, as I go through this, it was designing, printing, fitting, checking for depth, size, fitment, and all that to come up with a design that really worked. And as you can see, multiple times going around to get the right circumference, then the right height, and then here it was two different types of clips. And I finally settled on that one. And then here, again, is getting this so the angles were right, the rounded corners, then the height up to here. This was a print failure right there. This was another print failure. And then the final prototype. And I printed this one in Ryobi green just so it would show up better on camera against the two pieces of black plastic so you could see how it interfaced. I think that um, the final version will be in black just so it looks seamless. But um, when I get my Etsy store up and running, I will offer that in probably any color you want if you want to buy it from me or buy the files and print it yourself. So here's all the prototypes and what it took. And this was, you know, multiple hours of printing. And this one here uh, took about six hours to print. So let's go ahead and uh, put this thing together and see how it works. So here's my challenge. It's springtime and lawn's looking good. But there are no leaves. I think there's a little bit in this back corner over here left over from the winter. And then I've got some over here. Because I want to demonstrate this thing for you guys. 
And then across the street in my neighbor's yard, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but under that tree, that maple tree, is a bunch of those maple whirly birdie spinner things. So we're gonna try this thing out. That's been a question that a lot of people have asked if it works on those. So we'll try it on those as well. Well, let's get started. Let's demonstrate this thing. So now for the easy part, just emptying the bag. That's just a matter of disconnecting the adapter. Just put that aside for now. Taking the backpack off. Opening up the dry end. out the contents. So how do I think I did with this? Well I think the design's a winner. Uh, as you can see there's just a little bit of dirt on the inside so all the debris was flowing through and going into the tube like it was supposed to. This angle matched up perfectly with the leaf vacuum and this clip uh, provides enough friction and holds it into the Black & Decker hose. What I would change? Well, I think this needs to rotate 180 degrees. What it does right now is when I put this on the Ryobi side, I have to twist the hose to match it up here. So that induces a kink into the hose. So I think if I take this and I flip it around 180 degrees, that'll make it better. And then I think um, on this, ho this side here, I probably want to mold in a hole where you can put a machine screw or a wood screw or something to secure this to the Ryobi. Um, it did slip off once during the filming, but uh, that was probably just because I didn't shove it up far enough and use the friction fit. But you shouldn't really depend on a friction fit. So I think putting a hole in there um, just to say you could put a screw in there or just generally if you wanted you could just screw anything into this to hold it in place But other than that, I think this is a winner So what do I think about this setup? This is the perfect configuration for this leaf vacuum This bag the way it's designed It's easy to empty you carry it on your shoulder. So the weight is easy to handle I can imagine what this thing is gonna be like when it is full does it have the capacity of the bag that originally came with this? Nope, but it doesn't matter. It's easy to empty, so multiple emptying, not a big deal. This thing mulches those leaves down small, and probably in most yards, you're gonna be able to do it in one bag full. And the adapter, wow. 
I think this thing is perfect. And with those modifications I talked about earlier in the video, I think this thing's gonna be ready for market. I'll have it on Etsy. And those of you that are ready to modify your Leaf Attack vacuum with the Black & Decker collection bag, it'll be available to you. So if this video or any of my other videos helped you out, consider giving them a super thanks or becoming a channel member. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right down here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.